Hey there, Beertubers. Welcome back to another beer review here on the Beer Patrol. I'm Average Joe, and today I'm going to be reviewing a beer from the Founders Brewing Company out of Grand Rapids, Michigan. And this is the 2018 vintage of their Kentucky Breakfast Stout, a.k.a. KBS. This is an imperial stout that is brewed with coffee and chocolate and then cave aged in bourbon barrels for a year. And it seems as though everybody that I follow in beer tube land has already reviewed this beer. It's very popular every year. Um, they release it nationally, usually on April 1st. They decided to do it on uh, March 30th this year, which whatever, no big deal. This is actually released usually a couple weeks, two or three weeks before um, the national release in Michigan at the brewery and some other places uh, in the state of Michigan. This year, I believe KBS week was March 5th to 10th. And I saw a bunch of reviews go up uh, like mid-March. So uh, this has been you know, out there for a good month, five weeks and a lot of reviews out there. Um, and everybody seems to enjoy this one more than last year. Seems to be the prevailing thought with a lot of beers that are released annually. Uh, you know, last year's was better or last year's were worth. And you always compare it to the pro uh, previous years. I've had the six previous vintages of this beer. And every year it's a bit different. Um, you know, depending on the barrels they're using, the coffee, the chocolate. Uh, usually the ABV is a bit different. Like this year, for example, the ABV comes in at 12.31% alcohol by volume. Very exact, quite specific. Uh, 70 IBUs. This was bottled on February 20th of 2018, making this beer about mm, just under two months old in the bottle. Uh, a lot of people don't like the age of beer. Um, you know, if you're having a beer for the first time ever, I always say, you know, well, why don't you just drink it fresh? At the same time, you can do whatever you really want with it. I'm going to crack it open and give it a pour. Um, I have had this fresh. I've had this aged. I've had it, like I said, the last six vintages of this. And um, it's all over the place usually. But there's one uh, constant with this beer for me in that it's always pretty damn good. So even though I've, I haven't had the 2018 vintage, I'd imagine it's going to be pretty good. But that's why we review it, right? So anyway, let's get it into glass and see what we got going on. Um, I just saw a good friend of mine and fellow beer tuber, Paul, over at PA Brew News. Uh, he actually just gave this a proper review on his channel. And um, I only watched a few minutes of it because I wanted to review the bottle I had and I didn't want to see what he said. Not that it really matters. Him and I have quite a quite a different uh, palette. <laughs> a lot of times we're on the same page, sometimes we're not. But I just, I didn't want, I wanted to go in this with a little bit of fresh. I haven't seen the KBS review in a couple weeks. So I was like, I just want to hop into this one. I don't remember what any, everyone says. I just remember a lot of people enjoying it. So the beer just looks phenomenal. Yes, I do have it in the hashtag proper class where fuck that hashtag. But yeah, I have it in the KBS class that I bought a few years ago. But this looks like KBS. Dark as can be. Uh, about a finger, finger and a half of this beautiful mocha looking head. Uh, super creamy, tightly compact. Kind of looks like uh, the foam you get on top of a, a great hot chocolate with marshmallows. Just looks inviting. And yeah, it just it plays the role of a KBS. So let's get into the nose. Actually, that smells extremely smooth. How does it smell smooth? It just smells like no one, uh, I guess, characteristic is bigger than the other. So it just has like those cohesive nose to it. Yeah, big bourbon. Uh, it smells like it might be a little bit, a little bit hot. You know, a little bit uh, of the alcohol warming. I most likely would think that's going to be in the taste at 12.31. But a lot of years KBS drinks very easily. You don't get a bunch of the uh, alcohol. But yeah, it smells. It smells actually mellow. There is dark, like, chocolate, a little bit of sweeter dark chocolate mixed in with baker's chocolate, like maybe like a 50 or 60 uh, cacao bar type of thing going on. Uh, the coffee is actually understated. A little bit of coffee in there, a little bit of a roasty, toasty, roasted malt kind of thing going on. Maybe a touch of vanilla. The, the bourbon is present. There's not a lot of oak. Uh, <clears throat> one of my favorite vintage of this was 2016. I thought it was absolutely amazing. And the prior year, 2015, had this huge, heavy oak tannin presence that was kind of uh, overwhelming initially. I let that age like a year, year and a half, kind of mellowed it out. It was fantastic. You lost the coffee, but you also lost the oak tannin, so it was a win-win. Um, this doesn't have that oak tannin uh, punch in the face. Uh, last year's had a little bit going on, but this really doesn't have it in the nose. It doesn't, it doesn't feel too oak forward. There is a big bourbon kick, but the oak isn't present, other than maybe a little bit of the vanilla. Maybe some dark fruits in there, like a dark cherry. Yeah, it smells awesome, um, but it usually does. So cheers, everyone. Let's see what the 2018 Ventures of KBS has.
yeah, that's it's KBS. First and foremost, um, I haven't seen Paul's, like I said, his full review yet, but I'd imagine he thinks this is a bit thin. Most years, KBS is a bit thin for me. Usually, uh, medium full, lower full uh, body on it. You know, at 12.31%, I'm thinking it's going to be this thick, chewy, huge imperial stout. It drinks maybe like a more of like a 9 or 10% beer. Not a huge issue for me. For someone like Paul, of course, he's going to get very angry about it. Um, a very awesome mouthfeel. Super soft and creamy and luscious. It is perfect for a beer like this. The mouth feels fantastic. Uh, Flavor-wise, up front, huge blast of bourbon. Again, it's not overwhelming on the palate uh, with bourbon, but there's a lot of it. A little bit of the oak tannin that I said wasn't in the uh, aroma, totally in the taste, but just a smidge of it. Vanilla, more of that baker's chocolate, like that 50% cacao bar. It, it has a big uh, chocolate presence to it, but it's not a sweeter uh, chocolate. It's more of like a uh, semi-bitter cho chocolate. Um, the coffee is there, but again, it's quite, quite muted. Uh, this is maybe one of the least impactful KBSs I've had as far as uh, coffee goes. It's there, but it's maybe like the fourth or fifth character I noticed. A little bit of like a roasted malt character too. Uh, very toasty. But yeah, this is just, it's at 12.31%. Um, this is drinking a little bit better than I anticipated. It's KBS. I think I like this better than last year's uh, vintage, which I think a lot of people uh, agree with. It's not my favorite vintage, though. Again, that would probably go to 2016, maybe like a 2012, 13. I can't remember that far back. I remember enjoying them a lot. Uh, this beer, though, is up there with one of the better vintages I've had in the last couple years. Uh, like I said, probably 2016 first and probably this one next. Um, regardless, though, when it comes to rating, this is an awesome beer. Every year, I am really never disappointed by it. It always lives up to, I guess, the hype, but there really isn't any hype. A lot of people, I'm not going to get on my soapbox here and talk about this beer, but it's the year 2018, and this beer, people talk about, you know, having hype and, you know, not hard to get, but, like, you got to get in all this stuff. I, I walked into my local Wegmans grocery store, uh, grocery store and picked this up for $22.99 a four-pack, and they had a ton of them. A day later, I was in Whole Foods shopping, and they just had, you know, a bunch of them sitting there. This is probably going to sit around a lot. They make a lot of this now. It's not hard to get, but it's still, for me, close to a world-class uh, barrel age imperial stout. Probably a world-class. I'm going to give this year's vintage a 4.5 out of 5, but each year varies. 4.5, 4.75, 5 out of 5. It's a still an amazing beer. You're nothing uh, really to complain about. It's just nuances within the beer, what you prefer. Uh, the oak tannins maybe dialed back a little bit, maybe more chocolate, maybe a little less of the bourbon, and this would be a 4.75 or even a 5, but does it really matter? Not really. Um, it's awesome every year, and for those people out there that, you know, like the shit on this beer, I get it. I mean, I do get part of that. Um, it, you know, people like to talk about how this doesn't live up. Well, KBS from, you know, 2012 to now brewed the same, same ingredients, the whole nine. But the landscape within craft beer has changed. Uh, so many of us can go to our local breweries or our local bottle shops and find beers that are just as good or very comparable to this, maybe at a lower price, uh, maybe more local so you want to support it. So again, I'm not going to get my soapbox here and go crazy, but it, the landscape has changed a bit differently. So I don't look at this beer as being hyped that much anymore. I still look at it as being delicious. And every year, I'm probably going to buy a four-pack, uh, at, at least next year I will. And um, I thoroughly enjoy it. I'll probably sit one down and maybe I'll re-review this in a year. Maybe not. We'll see. But I thoroughly enjoy uh, the KBS line, uh, CBS as well. And I think Founders makes some phenomenal beers. So, um, yeah, not much more to say other than that was Founders KBS, the 2018 Vintage. I give it a 4.5 out of 5. And until next time, um, hopefully you want to like, comment, subscribe, the whole nine. Uh, if you do one of those three things, though, leave a comment. That's what I'm all about. Uh, have you had this year's KBS? Have you ever had KBS in general? Uh, what do you think of the line? Do you think it's hyped in your area? What did you pay for a four-pack? I'd be curious to hear uh, what the going rate is for everybody in each state or province in Canada. I know Ontario sometimes gets single bottles of these overseas in the UK. UK. So uh, that actually piques my interest quite a bit. So if you want to throw the price down there and the availability, I'd really like to hear about it. So yeah, anyway, that does it for another one. Until next time, cheers, everyone.